For immigration cases, birth certificates are normally a prerequisite. There are various situations where birth certificates may not be obtained, and it may be difficult, specifically when it comes to Indian-born nationals. For Indian-born nationals, persons born after April 1, 1970 are required to have birth certificates. But persons born prior to April 1, 1970, birth certificates are normally considered unavailable. Now they are considered unavailable for a variety of reasons, which include past poor birth, to birth registration practices, particularly for older generations, inadequate infrastructure in rural areas, and the laws that did not require registering births before April 1, 1970. In cases of people who were born after April 1st, 1970, although it is a requirement to obtain a birth certificate, there are a variety of different situations where a birth certificate may not be obtained. And this, again, may be because of infrastructure, the communities that they're in, they may have been born in very rural areas. In that case, if an individual is born after April 1st, 1970, and they're unable to obtain a birth certificate, they need to go to their local authorities with jurisdiction over the vitalities office, and they need to obtain a certificate of non-availability. In addition to the certificate of non-availability, they also need to obtain secondary evidence, which includes school leaving certificates, matriculation certificates, certificate of recognized boards from the school lot attended by the applicant, or a notarized affidavit. For people born before April 1st, 1970, see in these cases, the, there is normally an unavailability of birth certificates because it was not a requirement by law. So for these individuals to supplement the un unavailability of a birth certificate, they can obtain a notarized affidavit. Now this notarized affidavit can come from an older relative and the older relative can either be in India or in the US. But this affidavit, whether it comes from the older relative in the US or the older relative in India, needs to be notarized by the authority that is the country that they're in. So if it's an older relative in the US, it would have to be notarized by US authority. If it was an older relative in India, then it would have to be notarized by an Indian authority. In the cases that there may not be any older relative in existence, then it can be a self attested affidavit from the actual applicant. Now, there's important points to remember for these affidavits. Credibility is key. You need to make sure that you choose an individual who has known you for a long time and can provide detailed information about your life and your background. And if available, also include copies of any relevant documents like old school records, passports, or vaccination certificates to strengthen the letter's validity. Now, in preparing these letters, key elements to include in these letters are as follows. The person writing the letter, we need to include their details and details of the individual. So that includes the person writing the letter's full name, current address, and contact information. You also need to include relationship to the person that they're writing the affidavit for. They need to clearly state their relationship to the person whose birth, whose birth details are being verified. For example, I am the great grandfather, I am the great aunt, I am the mother-in-law, or the sorts of, and then the person's name. So you also need to include verification of identity and birth details for the applicant. So you need to, they need to provide information about where and when the applicant was born, the city, state, the approximate date, as much details as they know personally. They need to mention names of the parents and any known details about their residency at the time of birth. If this individual knows the village that they were born, if they know, you know, the location they were born in, if they have a general idea of the region, that information needs to be included. In addition, if applicable, they should mention any other documentation they have seen that supports the applicant's identity and date of birth. Meaning if they if they have seen any old school certificates, vaccination certificates, passports with approximate dates of issue, any other supplementary information or documents that they have viewed in preparation for writing this affidavit should be mentioned in the affidavit. They also need to include the reason that you do not have a birth certificate. 
meaning they need to briefly explain why the applicant does not have a registered birth. For example, born in a rural village where re registration was not readily available, born prior to the 1970 requirement, um, there was a situation where their birth certificate was lost, whatever details are in existence on why the birth certificate is not attainable also needs to be included. There needs to be a statement of credibility. They need to, at the end of the affidavit, affirm their personal knowledge of the applicant and their identity and state that they believe the provided information to be accurate based on their personal experiences with the applicant. They also need to present proof of identity. So that would mean whoever's preparing the letter, they need to get it notarized, and they need to include a copy of, let's say, their identification card, their government-issued um, identification card, a passport, a, their birth certificate, a driver's license, some kind of government-issued document that can verify their identity, that includes some identifiable features. Now, those are the important parts to include in these letters of recommendation used to supplement missing birth certificates. Thank you.